We're not being confined by what it was. Right. We're now being confined with what we invent. You know, we can create the future myth, right? The future origin story is in front of us. So when I look at NFTs, uh, the projects that are really working, the projects that really say something are the ones that tell an incredible story um, in a way that is immediately understood by the person receiving it. Um, I think that's also where we get all of value from now. I think the fundamentals of what value is has changed dramatically. And you look at something like GameStop and you say, well, why is GME worth you know, 100 or 300 or 500? And it has nothing to do with the fundamentals of the company. It has to do with this story that people want GME to succeed and they want to beat Wall Street. And so when I look at the NFT industry and I look at different NFT projects, I think, what story is being told here? And, and is it something that, that people can receive right away? And, emotionally grab grab and become a part of what they are. And so you look at PFPs, the ones that work are the ones that are tell your story, right? The, uh, the projects like apes and things like that are telling a much bigger story. And so when I did an NFT project, I definitely wanted to be about storytelling. Punk6529 always talks about Noah Harari's book. I think it's, it's, I think it's in Homer Dare, so I'm rereading now about intersubjective myths mm -hmm. and how humans use this kind of storytelling element to almost everything they do, whether it's government, religion, corporations, and that NFTs are kind of a big unlock in much of this, because as you rightly say, it creates value at the center of storytelling in a way that was before you'd sell a book or form a government or form a corporation, but this is a whole different way. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's an amazing way to look at it. I mean, I think I'm really intrigued by the whole idea of myths. If you look at my career, uh, what I try to do with every book is tell an origin story, is to create some sort of American myth around a company or a person, um, you know, the, the, the Facebook story. Um, we were creating a myth around Zuckerberg and around what Facebook really was, and it was based in all the reality of what it was, but we wanted it to be larger than life. And so every book I try and write, I'm trying to do an origin of something that I know is going to be world changing or life changing. Um, and so when I look at the NFT space, I feel like we're, we're, we're witnessing something that is an origin story. You know, the NFT is going to be a part of all of our lives. I am utterly convinced of this, that this is going to be the future of, of art, of, of ownership, of the way to work in the digital world and the metaverse or whatever you want to call it. It's all going to be working on the engine of NFTs. And you're going to see every company having an NFT that's part of their company, um, what Starbucks is attempting to do right now, what all of these companies do, every company is going to do. And so, yes, I think that NFTs are all about telling a story that talks about your brand or who you are or what you are and communicates with your community that gets to participate in it is incentivized to be a part of it. Um, so yeah, I'm all in on NFTs just because I believe in this technology as being the first time that an artist, um, you know, or a musician or, or whatever, a photographer um, can actually have their audience be a part of it and the community becomes part of it. So yes, it's all about the story and, um, and that's, that's what I do. So it seemed and like a natural it, progression. It feels this time is a departure for you because this is more like gonzo journalism. You're creating something where you are part of the story, right. which, is, which is a very different departure because you've been the observer on the outside looking in at these myths developing, yeah. these origin stories. And now here you are writing as one of the key characters, <laughs> essentially, at the center of this, which is... A very different approach now, right? Yeah, I mean, I've always been the fly on the wall, like just following the Winklevi around or whatever it is, and I've never stepped into it before. And this has kind of been my first experience doing that. And that was what, you know, when I first look into the NFT space, I did think, well, should I just write a book about NFTs? Or should I just write a screenplay about NFTs? And it was the nature of what NFTs are that made me think, no, no, I want to step in and, and, and be a part of the story in a way. Now, when I write the movie that comes at the end of my NFT project, I won't necessarily insert myself into the movie, um, but I am thinking for my next nonfiction book. Um, I've been telling stories on my Discord to our NFT community, and they've been stories from, you know, about Russian oligarchs and UFOs and, and all of the things that I've, that I've studied and learned about and all the crazy stories. That is probably going to become my next book 
and there's going to be a big NFT element to it. Um, so the goal is I'm writing that book basically on the Discord, um, and that book is going to be something that we're going to do a drop around and we'll be a part of it. So there is something Inception like going on here, uh, you know, it, it, with something within and something within something else. But I do think that that's that's what we're moving towards because look, we're all moving online and this is where it all lives. And right? This is why I was asking you before how you can have your brain operating so many different things, because this is exactly what you're doing here. Because there's a story within a story within a story, right. all going on at the same time. But because you're so used to that from the years of practice of doing so many projects, it's actually quite natural to you. It's actually very hard for a lot of people. They usually need a whole planning team. But <laughs> right. here's Ben being Ben, being slightly weirdly eccentric and figuring this all out. Which well, is listen, you know, I've always believed that one sentence leads to the next sentence. And when people say, you know, are you worried about writer's block? The reality, all writer's block is there's some sort of disconnect between the last sentence and the next sentence. For me, everything it adds to the next thing, to the next thing, to the next thing. So I'm always walking down a path. So even though it looks like it's getting bigger and bigger and crazier and crazier, for me, it's just one sentence leads to the next sentence leads to the next sentence. And that's what brought me to NFTs. It really was a progression from the Vegas story to the social network story, to the Bitcoin story, to the NFT story. I see it exactly like steps. Oh, it's you know? a clear, I mean, I've read all of the books yeah. and it is a clear journey to get here. Yeah, I mean, I see it and I feel it, and it's almost like it was meant to be. But obviously, that's just from the point of view of where you are now. Uh, everything always looks like it was meant to be. But I do feel like I have been in a progression towards the moment we're at. So, okay, let's catch people up with the project, where you started, where you are, where it's going, because there's, again, a lot going on in typical Ben world. There's yes. a lot going on. So, first, start at the beginning. For people who didn't watch the first interview, what was the original, the original idea, concept? Where did you start? How did it evolve? And then we'll go into where we are now and where it's going. Sure. So it all started with the Winklevi twins. They told me about NFTs and told me that, you know, why they thought this was going to be world changing. And I really stuck to it. I loved it. I thought this is amazing. And I wanted to create an NFT project that brings my community, people who like the stuff that I write about, along with me. So the idea came about a guy named Adam Brotman, who is a genius. He's at Starbucks um, making their NFT project, which is, has just been announced. Um, and he was like, you know, what you should do is, is drops that lead to a project. So the first drop uh, revolved around the GameStop drama. All of the artwork had to do with the rockets and memes like that. Uh, it was a, a 6,000 piece collection at 0.06 that, that sold out very quickly. Um, the idea was you own one of each of my three drops um, and you're going to share in a screenplay that I'm writing about the NFT space. Um, so I'm writing a movie about NFTs and the NFT community that is in the project gets to own half of it along with me. Um, so the first drop was about, you know, uh, at GameStop. The second drop was a free, everyone who had the first drop got to mint a um, Bitcoin Billy, we called them. So they were kind of Bitcoin billionaires type of art. Um, and it was kind of cool doing something Bitcoin-y on the Ethereum blockchain. Um, because to me, it's all one. I think that they all we all rise together. I'm not a maximalist or a minimalist. I know there's battles going on in that world, but I really think <laughs> The idea of Bitcoin on an Ethereum chain is, is the future here to some extent. We're all coming up together. Um, so Bitcoin billies, uh, I think there's been 2,000 and something minted so far. The minting goes all the way up to the third drop. So there's still a few people. What was really cool about the first drop is we have over 3,000 distinct owners and almost none of them were for sale. People pretty much held on to them, even though you know the prices haven't been wonderful. It's been winter for everybody. Um, people aren't selling them. They're holding on to them, which has been great. Um, and you need one of each of the three collections. And since the Bitcoin is the second collection is only one per wallet for people who own the first, it's kind of uh, going to be the much smaller collection. Um, and then the third collection is coming, you know, next week. And it is Vegas related. All of the imagery has to do with the journey I did into Vegas. A lot of my career takes place. And I wrote Bringing Down the House, um, which was about the MIT blackjack team, which was made into the movie 21. That's actually our 20th anniversary coming up. Uh, next month. Uh, that book has been out 20 years, which is kind of unbelievable when I think about it, um, and still sells more than almost all my other books combined, which is nuts. Really? Um, people love that story of, of just college kids taking down Vegas. I, se I sent you, I was watching it the other night on, on TV, I sent you a, oh, yeah. 
a picture of me watching the film. It was, I hadn't seen the film. It was, it's just it's a, such a good it. film. And I think that that movie was just such a cool wish fulfillment. Anybody who's ever gone to Vegas has thought, how do you win? And there's an a actual mathematical way you can win. And that's what that story was about. Um, so anyways, the, the third drop coming up next week is 6,000 pieces at 0.06. And it's all Vegas related, but we're doing some cool stuff with it. And you know, you'll see on the imagery that every picture has a blackjack hand on it. And you're going to be able to come to our Discord with your blackjack hand, get another card if you want, <laughs> take a hit, and play against the dealer and win prizes. So we're going to have all sorts of prizes involving my books, involving live things. Um, so we've always seen these things on top of the screenplay as being entrance into a community who share this sort of fun, loving view of, of what I write about. So a lot of people were invited to my book party of my last book, which was really cool. Uh, we had a big party in New York during NFT NYC. We're gonna do a big Vegas event for people who hold our things. And we're planning more and more live events. As I get closer to my movies, you're gonna get to go to movie premieres. There's gonna be chances of, you know, we're gonna do a live read through when I write this script and people who own it are gonna actually be able to read the script with me and play characters. And as we get closer to the movie, there's gonna to be tons of involvement, both creatively and, and, and in person, uh, anybody who wants to come along on this ride with us. And so, as you know, I see this as the beginning of a much bigger platform. So, you know, you, you get our three things, you get to be a part of the screenplay. Hopefully there will be, we'll sell the screenplay for millions of dollars and there'll be payback to people, but that's only part of it. Hey visionaries, thank you for tuning in. For more free crypto content like this, head over to Real Vision, dot com forward slash crypto. You'll get early access to the most brilliant minds in the space to cut through the noise, get in-depth analysis and get you ahead of the curve with unbiased insights.